set that going so I won't forget. Hello. Hi, morning, morning, Jamie. Morning, how are you? I'm very well. Great. Hi, Jane. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hi, good to see you all. Morning, good to see you. Great. So we're all gathering. That's fantastic. Um, Jamie, is Chris joining us today as well? Should be, yeah. I've okay. just dropped them a message to check that they've still got the link no problem. and everything set up. No problem. I think um, Richard Reza will also join us as well this morning. He did. He did mention he'd join. Um, and uh, I don't think. I think that's it then. I don't think Kate is Caitlin joining us. Not today. No. I don't think so because she's, she's with in, the yeah. rehearsals for the other show. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So that's. Um, so yeah. So we'll, we'll see when when Richard can join us as well. But uh, we'll, we'll get started in a moment. Um, we just, I've got my email open just in case Richard's got any trouble getting, getting in. He might join us later perhaps, or um, uh, let me just close that down, just check on here. Okay, I'll keep, my, I'll keep my email open just in case I get anything coming in. Fantastic. I can't see him yet, he may join later. Great. Okay. Well, here we are. We've already had Jamie and I uh, met on Tuesday. We had a session. That we did three hours on on, on Tuesday. Um, at, at the moment, um, so Jamie, your situation is that you're you're pretty much self you're self isolating at the moment. So, um, and then you've got a you've got a short period of of, of a break. We're going to have. Um, because you've got some surgery coming up and then we're going to have a few weeks after that as a gap and then we'll kept, we'll continue um, with with the residency after that and um, but there will be at some point there'll be other members joining Jamie as, as it develops so there's there's areas for other, other performers to come in um, uh, in and we'll talk about who they are and what what they're doing but um, essentially um, what we're working with today hi Chris you're here as well fantastic um, just so I'll do a little round table because I'm not sure Chris knows everybody. So just to sort of introduce it in a moment. But uh, and then, then we'll just recap what we did on Tuesday. Does that, does that sound OK, Jamie? And then, then I'll get into what we've done since but since Tuesday and what I've done, done for you. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So please, um, Chris, uh, Jamie, do you want to just quick, quickly say hello and just just do a little hello to everybody? I'll we'll start, start with Jamie. <laughs> Everyone knows Jamie already. <laughs> Hello, yeah. <laughs> and how are you today? You okay? All good? Yeah, all good. Um, looking forward to this. How's everyone else? Excellent. Okay, we've got Chris. Chris, uh, you, you work with Jamie, don't you, with, with Cryptic Arts? Okay. Just... Yeah, so I, um, I work as Jamie's assistant. I've been taking notes in the background. Um, also, I work as a visual artist, so Jamie's brought me on board also to like, sort of give suggestions and keep notes on that. Really pleased it was really amazing to see what you guys have been up to so really pleased to see the results and how it's progressing great thanks thanks chris so let me introduce you jane just oh. yeah. hi everyone <laughs> um i'm jane i'm the um i work at the university of brighton i'm a lecturer there and i'm a co-i on this project um my background is in inclusive arts practices and arts with disabled people and people living with dementia. Fantastic. Steve, we'll come down to you. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Steve. I'm at LaSalle College of the Arts uh, over in Singapore. So we're eight hours different. It's 5 p.m. here. Um, and I've, I've worked with Paul on a number of collaborations and uh, my research field is the use of technology in, in theatre uh, and telematics and uh, multimedia theatres. 
Fantastic. And Tom, yeah. Yes, good morning, uh, Tom Truscott, uh, technician uh, at the School of Art and Media. Um, I am on my own in the office this morning, so if I disappear briefly, it's because someone's knocked on the door requiring something. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Great. Okay, well, look, let's get started. What, what I'm going to quickly do, so um, I think it might be useful for me just to quit. What, would you like me just to quickly show show the others, Jamie? What what just the, the, the scenes I did for you on Tuesday, and then we'll go in to look at what what I've what I've done since. Would that would that be okay? That'd be great. So, what I did on Tuesday, I did some mock ups for Jamie to look at. Now these are based on on Jamie's current on their current perform one of the current performances. Um, not not dying or or um quality of life is is uh, not a measurable outcome i'm not sure which title it was in the end um it's been not dying up until late last year so i think those photos are marketing right that we're aiming at with the new title um oh, okay. but that's not too we both titles essentially refer to the same show just i guess evolutions okay. thereof wonderful so these are just some some mock-ups of from that from that marketing material and they're they're all built into layers and i've put um, jamie into the mock-up um to sort of show jamie what he could look like in 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 the actual performance um and we did a number of different different sorts of things um we did this one as well so it's, there's a lot of type in in the actual performance as well um jamie wanted to play around with different sorts of things moving around i was showing him different things um and we did uh, this sort of different backgrounds. We applied some atmospheric smoke. Um, Jamie also had some um, video pieces he uses in, in the performance. And we looked at ways that we might try and incorporate that um, and how it, how it might better, how, how it could be presented. So all these elements, obviously the, the, the image you're seeing of Jamie would be live. Um, we added, um, and the, the these are taken from these sets and environments are all, as I say, taken from images and bits of video that Jamie sent to me um, and different props that appear in, in Jamie's uh, performance. This is actually an animation of some of some wings that actually do appear in the actual performance itself as physical props, but we made them into digital assets so they could be used as digital props as well. And we could then change Jamie Put, put him on different, put him in different uh, costumes in, in, uh, and in situations on those sorts of things. Um, and then I just showed Jamie a few things. We just tried out a few little things about how we could try and put him onto that figure now. Um, and I've got some better versions of that now I've worked on since, since Tuesday. I'll show Jamie in a moment. And then we looked at how we might want to think about um, bringing in uh, these again, these are all still photographs, but these could be performers. So in the performance, there are medical staff that work with Jamie or that they're, they're performers, <laughs> obviously um, acting. I, th I think that's right. Um, they're both. They both are. They are actual med medical staff as well, but play playing a role um, in, in the performance. And then we've got we've got the the, um, the BSL translator who also plays a role in costume in the performance. And, and that's something we would possibly explore. Um, I talked to Jamie about how we could, um, uh, do things, oh, yeah, actually like that, um, where we could put up, where we could, we can have performers with Jamie who are in the, who are in the actual performance, who could interact with Jamie. Um, they, they, they couldn't physically move him around, of course, but, but they can, um, interact. We can layer them on top so they could appear to be doing, um, different things like, in one scene giving giving jamie a, an injection um and i talked to jamie about how we can move them move them around on stage set zooming in zooming out and they could be then walking around and so on and finally we looked at some ways of thinking about how the apparatus um that, that jamie uses uh in his life and in, in his performance that we could actually use that as digital props as well and, and actually put those bring those objects in as digital things rather than physical things so those are some of those a quick recap on some of the things we've done 
Um, so just before I continue, Jamie, did you want to add to anything to that? I should just say that you did provide us with a, a script since then, and we have we have got another ver a new version of your sort of re slightly reduced script, working to about performance about twenty minutes. But is there anything you wanted to add, Jamie, or anyone having have any questions or comments so far? No, I think that's all. That's good. That's all clear. Okay, great. So those are some of the things we've been playing with. So, and we had to really, we, we talked a lot. We, so we, we've, Jamie provided um, a script. Now this is a, an adapt, not an adapted, it's an extract or a sec section of Jamie's original script for this performance that um, that is around about 50 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes the total performance. And we decided that we would take a 20 minute section of that script to explore in the telepresence stage um, context. So it's got a number of scenes in it. One is, it, it's, um, so what I've done first of all, Jamie, <laughs> I've, start, I've taken the, the titles of each of your scenes and given them a, a kind of heading. Now I don't, I'm not suggesting you use these, but it just helps, helps me in terms of, of locating different scenes and sets. So, so the first set we had was on page seven of your original script, which is page one of the new script. And it starts with scene five, I, I Should Sleep. Um, and this is, a, this is the scene we discussed about the, the, um, the hospital room, um, and in, or particularly the part where um, the medical staff, the hospital staff, are advising you on your medication and, and listing and your you're listing all the medications you have to have. So what I've done is I've put you I put you first of all into this shot here. So I can just fade you in. Now I've actually you provided me with a um, with uh, a, a bit of video that was shot of you uh, in in a, in hospital. I then cut that cut some sections out of that and. Um, to, and actually placed you on this other bed. So I've taken you and put you on a hospital bed, and then I've, I've actually layered you between between that. So let me just show you the working, so you're familiar with how that works. What what I'm doing in that scene there. Um, actually, I'll wait for a moment. I'll show you the next shot because I've got a I've got a very dark I've got a dark filter on top of this, which kind of spotlights you as though. It, it, you talked about having the sort of opportunity to have a sort, sort of like a stage spotlight on you. Well, we can take that off for a moment and we'll take that out and we'll just place you. So currently you're placed in this hospital bed, in this, this scene, uh, in the stage set, actually, initially. So just to show you what that looks like, how that's built up, we can have a little look. So if I take off... Um, I can take off this shot. That will then just show your your current um, keyed uh, image, live image coming in, on to, which I then placed underneath this particular object. And then under that object, I've got you, and then behind you, I've got a hospital bed. So that's how I build that up. Um, and then the background and the smoke come off, and then the background comes off. So the background on, green smoke, atmospheric smoke, hospital bed yourself um, positioned in that location and then the 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 hospital putting you behind in, sort of within that that image that, that is of you uh, from from that video you sent to me so I did that um, and then what I, what I did now in this scene we talked about a collage we talked about painterly effects watercolor collage, hospital room and so what i did we have and you you did say to chris actually when because you are going to be in hospital there might be an opportunity to take some pictures of you as well you wanted to explore that which you certainly can can do and you and, and that's something that i think i'll follow up with chris um, I think, yeah I, chris just keep these to message me and remind me because i will probably be on a lot of drugs and forget otherwise all right so if you could set a reminder to yourself to chase me chris that would be brilliant it's already in Asana. 
All right, but only when you, when you're in a position to do that. Not you know, don't worry. Don't yeah, worry. I'm, I'm not going to be hounding Jamie while they're like seriously. Yeah, but hounding. hound from I think Wednesday onwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it's already in the Don't worry. Okay. Well, I've prepared okay. a little little mock up for you, and this is all taken. I've used this. Um, I've used Adobe Stock, so I have Adobe Creative Cloud. So I've used Adobe Stock images. And I've made this collage for you. So these are all royalty uh, free. I can you can use all of these. It's not a problem if you wanted to. Um, so let me just show. And I've I've done. Okay, here we go. Let's bring you in. Right there we go. So this is this is a sort of mock up image, <laughs> just of collage of you being surrounded by seven seven um, hospital members of hospital staff, doctors, consultants, nurses. Um, who are potential are going to be the potential people who will advise you on your um, you know who are going to be reading out who you, who you are going to be reading out this medication for um, this is just as I say a mock-up and something to, something to work with um, but there is a little build-up in here that shows you quite quite clearly how they all work um, so it does allow us to take out different sections um, it weirdly it does look a bit like an AI generated image, but uh, I guess that's exactly what AI image image generation does. It, it looks for stock images based on words, and puts images together and blends them together in a way that I've probably done just much the same thing, but without any without any without any assistance of AI. Um, this is all done in Photoshop, so you can I can take out the the the, the hospital staff behind you. I can take out the the, the doctors in front, the three in front of you. Um, like that, so you appear in that room. It has that sort of, sort of strange, a slightly sort of painted effect, which does help take the edge off it in a sense of it being stock type images in some ways. I think, but happy to explore that. You can. Um, so, so bringing them back in. We can bring them in at one at a time if you wanted to, but I have taken their heads off, <laughs> put your head on, which is what you wanted. Um, and this, which will take some practice. Do you want to, is there anything you want to say about that at the moment, Jamie, before I continue with this a little bit? Yeah, um, I think also just briefly, I think what I was thinking was that for each bit, as I speak, their face is replaced with mine just for those like two words great so for each one we have my face where my body is and my face doubled with the two words and then for the you're just not trying hard enough line we've got my face where my body is but also on all of the doctor's faces great well um I'm... sorry go ahead and then i guess my only other thinking was that with I really like the kind of weird painterly style, mm. especially if it can be applied slightly in vmix to my face. And I think with the background, I'd also been thinking about that weird collage effect I sent over a couple of mock-up ideas mm. with the concept that that then allows the background and the doctors and things to kind of fall away, almost like torn up paper. So those are the other things that I was thinking with, with regard to all of that. Let me make a note of that bit there, because I think the, um, that would be useful to make a note of. So make it, bringing, giving, giving a, an effect to yourself, I'd have to take, take it, it would have to be taken through another um, bit of software, um, a kind of VJing software that will do that live because vMix, is limited in terms of its its effects. Um, those sorts of image manipulation effects have to be done um, with, um, as I say, yeah, with with something like uh, Resolume, um, which is a bit a bit of VJing software. It can be can be done. It can be done, and it needs to explore. Can't promise we're going to get the exact same kind of effect we've got here, but there might be something something you might want to explore something similar, and I can show you in that terms... software. Yeah. In terms, though, of keeping this simple and kind of me learning how to do it all in a replicable way, yep. rather than relying on other people's knowledge to deliver it each time, that even if I'm bringing in 
graphic design experts, I'm not a designer, that I want to be very confident that I know what I want them to do and that they're just doing it. I'm wondering whether rather than doing that, we instead just try and get, try and make everything else maybe even slightly more abstract so that the fact that my face is then in a sort of real higher definition doesn't look like an accident but like a very deliberate design choice mm -hmm. i'm just wondering if that would be an easier route to take it could it, it, yeah i think it would be an easier route i think you're absolutely right i think i i would want uh, it bringing in another bit of software brings in a whole whole new set, set of skills and requirements so it might be the be that might be the better way to go i agree just one thing that will help you with this with this particular scene, as you can see, and you'll see in a moment with the, how I'm going to bring you in with with the heads as well. But I've literally, rather than cut, cutting off the head and shoulders, I've cut out literally your head up to your neck, so you fit directly into that into that figure. One thing that will help you is just to dress. If you were wearing a white um, sort of uh, um, gown, that will really really neatly sort of position you in or give you that bit of freedom to move around because no one will notice that bit of white as it pops up and down but they do see an orange bit of orange shirt so if you're wearing a white sort of uh, um, bed gown um, it will really help and it'll blend in very nicely and one of the things that will, will be useful as we can think about of course is light is what sort of lighting you might want to explore in your space because we're doing virtual um, green screen backgrounding that won't affect the green screen so so we can actually put any kinds of colored lights on you um, and you could control those lights as well um, to give you a better better clear clarity of your your image that sort of thing so actually as an alternative if for example we had and i don't know if i can do that right now or not i might be able to adjust slightly that adjusting slightly did not work <laughs> i cannot rescue that situation that is beyond me Okay, um, we've worry, now got a now. bit of bizarre light. I was trying to work out whether that could be adjusted so that it faced me, so that my face was very brightly lit from the front to kind of wash me out a bit. Yeah, there could well there could be a light, some kind of lighting control um, that you might want to have, but it would probably be, a, be have to be a good a good lamp, you know, good good theatre theatre lamp. That's better now. That's better. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, thanks yeah. thanks be to having everything on a smart home. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can explore that, and then the backgrounds and the, tear, the tearing effect. You wanted the scene to end with a kind of torn paper, of the sort of that is torn away. Again, that, that's something I haven't got round to looking looking at for you, but that will be another After Effects trick to do that. That's something we won't be able to do in in VMix as such, but we can certainly do that with a bit of After Effects with the with with the background at the end of end of the scene. And I'm kind of hoping to pick up a bit more about using both After Effects and Photoshop as course. we go through this. Sure, Again, sure. so that even if I'm, I'm, I don't have the visual eye to be a graphic designer, but I do want to know when I'm using these techniques in a future project, how to explain to someone what I want them to do. Yep. And I think that requires some familiarity with everything. Sure, sure. Well, we can do that. We can do that outside of these sessions as well. I'm happy to meet up and I'm sure if I can, I can um, perhaps uh, ask Tom as well, perhaps we might be able to join up, join up together to, to help you, assist you with some of those things. And, and certainly I can do some online work with you. Uh, yeah, so, or even just a, a time where you're doing some work on the project design. Yeah. If I can just come in on a screen share and watch what you're doing. Absolutely. No problem at all. Then that yeah. will. I think that's probably I'll learn quite well that way, even if you're just sort of doing it and like talking about what you're doing okay. and I'm watching with the same software open okay. so that I can play with similar things. I think that's probably because I think for me, it, I, I think from our earlier conversations, it felt like one of the key, um, the key things that you wanted to do as I guess part of the outcomes of this was around organizations coming away a lot more able to deliver this work independently and have the kind of and that that's sort of partly why the equipment and things so that we can go away and create other work in yep. future exactly no 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 absolutely that's that's completely the intention we want we want this we want these skills to be completely transferable so so i'm um, uh, 
so if there's anything you if, and if you have other other people you work with whether or whether chris wanted to, to to do to work with you or i'm happy to to uh, to join you uh, in, a, in another session to just to look at some of that image generation work whether it's with photoshop or after effects um, I tend to do things in a bit of an unorthodox way sometimes. There might there might be simpler ways of doing things, but I, I, I have certain habits as everyone does with these bits and pieces. But um and maybe Tom might 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 be able to help as well. How about that, Tom? I think yep. I, I think within the team at the moment, whether it's myself or Caitlin, um, it will probably be the ones. And then because we've got people that we use for quite a lot of our design stuff mm. who will already know how to do the technical things that that I'm learning so sure. it's a lot more about me learning how to explain things okay okay I've got some familiarity I was quite confident with GIMP for a number of years which because I couldn't afford Photoshop sure okay well, we can come back to it later on. Perhaps it, it, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure everyone's going to be here for the rest of the session, Jamie. So, so they yeah, might so only be here course, for the yeah. first hour. So, why don't we, at the end of the session, or the last last hour or half an hour, we can look at some of those things in a bit more detail. Um, what I wanted to quickly just show you, while, whilst I've got this screen up here, is that what we course, what, what of course we can do, um, is um, we can. Um, I can zoom the entire scene, so I could zoom you, zoom zoom you in as well, of course, and then pan you around like that. So you can actually we can actually start at a much more zoomed in position on you there. And as you can see, if you were wearing something a little bit of white around you, that would work perfectly. Would would sit sit you into that scene. So we can actually do um, we can position you uh, back. We can zoom you in and out. We can move the whole scene. We can zoom in and out of the scene and get that clarity. Now, if you may want to zoom in, we could zoom in on faces. We could move around with the faces as we move around. So let me show you that next scene. So in actual fact, just thinking this through, what I've done is, so this this scene, this part of this scene is going to take quite a bit of quite a bit of setting up. Um, and we may want to do it with some timers and time you because these these, these lines are quite short. Um, and so they, they would then have to cut or fade to different people. So, so your head then appears on this person's body, and you say that you say that line, um, and then we then merge to the next the next line, and you then are on that one. Obviously, these aren't aren't quite lined up yet, but or the right scale perhaps we can have to finalise that. Um, we can move you around. You then say the next line, and you're on this body, and so on, and we keep keep going round the the seven different medications they're prescribing you in the script, and then it goes to this one. Um, again, like I say, the, the actual the actual um, heads aren't quite set up, but 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 we could be a bit if you want be a bit as you say a bit, 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 bit more abstract and playful with that. Um, Bit difficult to do some of them because they're not they're, they're at an angle and they're not quite working but i don't know if that's you know is that is it the best way to go is to cut the head out would you just want the head just to plonked on top of their head maybe is that better um you know i don't it, it's up to you really how how best we put it out i've literally cut them out if you see the next one you'll see what i mean that one there um sort of works <laughs> it's a bit tilted but you see i've literally cut his head out from from the shirt collar upwards so literally it's putting you into that character um to, to say that line when they when they say the medication yeah. um and then last one this was this was quite tricky actually but we're getting a bit more playful a bit more experimental here how do we do how do we deal with that one but what you wanted to do um is this this you wanted to have you wanted to finish off with having everybody with all your faces on everybody which i have also done which is here but i've also got the words coming up you're just not trying hard enough when you say that you're just not trying hard enough um now the question is to think about for you here how do you want how would you want your head to appear 
is that the best way for it to appear like it is is it better to just put your head on top of on top of their head you could as i say you could zoom in and move around the characters in the shot so we can actually do a um yeah what are your thoughts before i carry on or anybody's comments maybe <laughs> i think from my space my, my perspective especially if we're making the the like the stock image edits a lot more kind of like or a bit more kind of abstract so that the contrast with my face being a lot more realistic is seems a lot more deliberate then my feeling is yeah if we're doing that then i think we kind of maybe it's okay for it all to look a little bit chaotic mm. i mean it might work i haven't tried it it might work it might be um the, the, the difficult with difficulty is with this it's because we're keying you with your head and shoulders we're not we're not we're not isolating out your face now i could make a kind of template with a kind of oval and just have your face poking through an oval on all of these on top of these um rather than cutting out cutting out their head it could just place your head in, as an oval object and just put it on on all these different places that's another possibility paul i'm just wondering it's tom speaking um yeah. whether we can actually get more than one camera feed so you could actually have different angles so it actually look more realistic that the people on the left are looking into that space that's that direction and people on the right are looking in that direct in the other direction that that could that could work if jamie in, in the situation that jamie was controlling the vmix himself so yeah. that, that would be possible to get and get multiple camera inputs if it was being done remotely by somebody else, not not necessarily me, but by somebody on the production who was controlling the vmix uh, remotely, it would need a second computer. Every input, every every vmix call input requires an individual separate computer. So, but that wouldn't that would also mean that even if if Jamie was in a studio situation or or in, or in a another space um and was had had the vmix production there we could of course get multiple cameras in but that that that's a more that's yeah that's perhaps later later we can look at, think about that i think i also so at the moment what's been done particularly with the one on the front right is that it's a kind of quite a steep diagonal to kind of try and match the doctor and I'm wondering if instead what we want is for me to deliver that straight to camera such that all of these versions of my face are staring at the audience. And we've got a kind of, again, we've got this weird painterly scene. And also, if I'm wearing a hospital gown, then what we see as red at the moment will instead see the face and chest of somebody in a hospital gown emerging from the body of a doctor. And I'm wondering if, rather than building in too much technical complexity, we instead want to work with what the technology can easily do and then get the graphics and backgrounds and things such that those look like deliberate decisions rather than kind of easier decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I um I I I agree. I think what, what we could do um the hospital gown will certainly help, but I can straighten I I can straighten you up so that your the only images that are kind of twisted or sort of slightly on a slant are the images um on your is this particular yeah the one the closest one the front front right um that one is is at a, at a slant of course and, and and the far left as well but we could 
we could equally just just drop you straight on top top of the person's head already. I don't know how that would look. Whether whether actually it would just be the same would, would be the same kind of thing. But I, mean, I can show you that now. Um, let me just take that out. Um, I'm just going to switch off the titling for a minute so we can see it a bit clearer. Um, but I could just um, so if I just imagine, yeah, let me just change this one quickly just for a moment. Doctors. Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to be in front of you, of course, because um, I've taken off. The <laughs> I've taken off the. Uh, so that's if I if I put them literally behind you. Then your head appears like that. And if you're wearing a white gown, so I'd actually if I could make you bigger to fit to cover the head, perhaps. Um, actually, which one is? Oh, no. Yeah, so for example, that one, you know, you could change something about, you could actually, if I could reset that, reset that. Oh, no, hang on. Um, so literally, you would be, I just put you on top like that, of course. But then you are going to have this. This sort of has these head and shoulders cut in, or as I say, I could put in a little frame around you and have you um, moving. Just have a cutout, a stencil that just cuts you out and puts you behind that. Um, I think I can do that. Can I do that? Yes, I can do that. I think, so. <laughs> but um, I think it's a possibility of doing that somehow. So yeah, Paul. Finish. Paul, the the, the major the majority of the the doctors and nurses and, and so on, um, just have a kind of V V shape where the you know the the shape of the collar. So if you did a uh, you know a cutout of, of Jamie just with the with the V to lose his shoulders, you know that you know that that may work work better. And and even sort yes. of if Jamie has no, nothing on top, just skin, that may sort of fit in better. Because the 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 majority sort of have a um, you know an, an open collar, with the exception of um, mm. the the main doctor on the left, who has who has a, a shirt and tie. But it, but that may work better. So you haven't got this sort of yeah yeah yeah. I also wonder whether because there's four doctors at the back on the left that all work really well. Mm whether the answer is to simply replace the three that aren't working quite so smoothly with ones that are facing forward a bit more mm. so that again the angles and things are all so yeah with with that one that you're adjusting at the moment mm. perhaps it's just about the size of my face on it and the shirt and tie thing mm. and that if we took out the shirt and tie that that would that that might work and then there's the two on the right that don't but that perhaps yeah it, the, it's, the answer is to change the figures if necessary it's it's actually yeah so it could be that these three figures here um yeah so these these current figures it's these it's those three figures that are so those ones at the back those four at the back could be lined up quite okay. quite, quite well it's when they are you know, the other three at the front they're all actually at a kind of angle, slightly to the side. They're not, but you're really wanting people that are absolutely front face on. Um, so again, I can have a, I can have a look, have a, have a look, have a look for some other, other, other ones. I quite liked, I quite like the ones here because this particular doctor is looking at a, a, at some medication and he's got a clipboard in his hand. <laughs> I quite liked that. Um, and he, this older chap here um, is. Um, He's sort of sort of leaning over, pushing something, but um, we can just put you on top. I mean, it can. I mean, this one here. So let's, let's just look at this one here. Um, yeah, this one here is perhaps slightly more. That that was the one that was probably most tricky, but um, we can make it slightly bigger. But it does have quite a nice effect when you're all talking. 
and I see you all talking, but um, could they turn? Could they turn? In what sense? Which ones? Their the body. The actual images of the, of the of the doctors. For those for those two at the front, could they be facing? In, I, I ignore me. Actually, what I'm thinking, I don't think will work. No, no, no. Don't worry. I mean, I mean, I I'd have to find new new characters for them. That's that, that that's all. There would have to be new characters in there. Um. Okay. We've got a few suggestions. I could try some things out, um, and we can we can have a little play around with it. Um, I think maybe the stencil idea might be the best way to go. Either way, and and I can explore it with some. We can we could look at other other doctors we can put on there. We can um, explore it with the oval. There, there's some options we can play around with. Um, and as Steve mentioned, maybe a little try that a little bit with the with the um, V neck sort of stencil, so that would position you directly into them. But there is obviously a bit of lining up we'd have to do with all of them. And and as long as it's as long as the lining up is all the same, because don't forget when you move your head for one body, it will move your your head for every other body as well. That's in that particular shot. But what do you think, just in terms of the kind of um, scene movements are you are you happy to sort of have um characters that appear let me just cut to this one here so as as you read out the line we would see we would see the character the the, the, the head changing so the head changes yeah. from here then to here to here, to here. but what yeah. I'm, what i could also do if you wanted i mean it just gives it a bit more it, you could you could slightly zoom into that one character. So if I show you, although your head may, may do something weird to your head, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> That'd be a bit of an experiment. Let's just try it. Something something to explore. Let me just try this one first of all. So we're going to go to this one. Okay, bear with me. I'll bring it up on screen so you can see it. So we've got, we've got this one here. If I was to do this, um, and I was to zoom in. On your head. I can zoom right in actually, not right there. So put that character in the center. That's the one that says the first line. OK, so just close that for a moment. And then the second shot. Is. This this is our second shot. And this is the second line. Um, if we did something like this, it doesn't have to. It could actually be any person. I'm just picking these people out, so it could be other. It could be somebody else actually that says that says that line. Completely up to you. Um, any of them could say it. Let's just try that and see what happens. So that would then go to there. What you could do is go to there, back to the other one. And then I think, let's see what happens. It may, may, not, may not work. We could, uh, yeah, there's going to be a slight, yeah, there's a slight, doesn't quite merge the way I wanted it to. If you see, you you are actually, part of the scene moves across, part of the scene is new. So it's got a new. I actually, conceptually, I really like that. I think, again, it's about kind of creating something that feels like it's meant to be digital which this does with the sense that they're like moving around the bed okay they could move from other other places as well so you could, could move it it doesn't have to go to the, the the doctor next to them it could we could move around the entire scene so you know you could go from uh the first line is is the character in the front the second line is the character at the back and then back to the front and to the back to the front. Do you know what I mean? Left, right, move, move right the way around across the, across the scene. Because it's unlikely they would all say the lines in it. They would all say they would all be in line for those lines, I guess. But we can explore that. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm recording this. So I've got lots of comments and thoughts 
to go away with on this particular scene. And um, we can have a little play around and see what we can do. We can do. Um, this scene ends with, um, I think, fading out to it basically spotlights you again, I think. So it brings you into a spotlight image at the end of this scene. Um, again, you're going to give me more instruction if there's other things in this scene that you're going to want to have. But then it would actually go to the next the next scene, which is to uh, the panel zoom meets that panel act two panel panel zoom begins. Now, I know I haven't done this on Tuesday. We talked about um, you wanting to have a kind of uh, a simulated <clears throat> person starting a zoom call, which I can do. Um, and then in your performance, you have this, this comes up on the, on the screen. Um, so, whilst... yeah, no, sorry, ignore me. No, my no. little, my webcam figure was covering something that I was going to check. And I'm, yeah. Do you want to go back to that other one, Jamie? Keep, no, you're going to keep going. That was my mistake. Okay. So currently I've got this, this slide in here, but this, this scene could be this kind of opening up a zoom, zoom call. You wanted to have a little sort of, um, uh, uh, cut, cut away to a, to, a, to a desktop, to a kind of doctor's desktop with this kind of rather um, uh, generic kind of background of a kind of, fa of, a kind of, a, uh, of the sort of doctor's family or something on, as his wallpaper. Um, and then it would go to this particular scene, which is our kind of Zoom, our Zoom uh, uh, conversation with you. Again, now I've done something different here for you. I've put you again. I've 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 layered you with the pillow behind you in that shot. So once again, if you're wearing a white gown, you'll that that will fit nice and neatly in there. Um, your head would be very much positioned in, in on that body. It's probably a little bit too small, and it probably should be a bit bigger. But again, you see, I haven't haven't lined these up properly. And of course, these would be these characters left and right. You've got your doctor and your social worker having that conversation with you in this scene. I think it starts off with um, and they would be live um, brought in from a from a Zoom call. Um, I should I haven't mentioned that to everybody yet. I should just mention it to the to everybody to the one of the things we've looked at that Jamie and I discussed is that for the for the final performance, um, the new the new version of vmix currently integrates zoom completely integrates zoom into it which means that you can take your feeds directly from zoom into vmix and work with them as um, assets in your in your program output which means that people can watch the audience can be on zoom watching it um, and the intention is that these characters the audience would assume these characters are in the zoom audience but we just simply pipe out their video into the program at the points when we want them and they suddenly become part of the performance. They are then um, a doctor talking or a social worker commenting, uh, having a conversation with Jamie um, or about, you know, about Jamie. Um, and so the, the, the nice thing is that the audience don't know they are performers until they suddenly start and so they suddenly come up in in the performance here and they look very much like anybody else in the, in the performance itself so once again jamie this is this is intended for your your current situation um you're you're currently self-isolating you're you're um in, currently in bed with the webcam on you and we can position you in this character um quite neatly to put the pillow behind you, the body in front of you, so you're kind of sandwiched between two layers. So then we go to Act Two, Intro, Doctor's Instructions, and we go to um, this again. This then goes to please wait. We go to Doctor Lawal's personal meeting room, and then this this particular scene, Jamie is. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie. Jamie's having a meeting. Oh, sorry, no. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Um, <laughs> just a couple of a couple of quick things about the yep. 
Zoom panel, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that at least at the beginning, I don't want, I think it's better if I'm not visible. And okay. what we see, so what the audience sees inside the Zoom that they're, that they're looking at, um, it, so the audience on their screens see a Zoom meeting with the with the people who are in the panel Zoom meeting only, as if they were looking at as as if they were in a Zoom meeting looking at the people. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, they, they, the 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 difficulty is, or the the, the 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 sort of the paradox here is that they already are in a Zoom meeting. Yeah, that's the kind of I want to give that sort of tunneled effect. So it, it should look like the program output should look like a Zoom meeting. So it's called yeah. almost like. So they're literally... for me, it's about sure. playing with their complicity so okay. that they feel like they're part of the panel in that Zoom at the outset. Yeah. Later on, I think we could play with it a bit more. But I want to establish the idea that the audience could actually be the panel. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so first of all, you want you want it to look like it's moving from the kind of sort of scenography output to a kind of suddenly somebody's sharing their screen. Well, they could have yeah. shared. They could they could in actual fact share their screen and interrupt it. So one of the performers. Yeah, basically. Could... Yeah, I want the audience. I don't know quite how to do or explain this, but I want the audience to feel like. To it, for it to feel like their photos might be on the next screen of the Zoom if they click sideways. Right. That what they can see is the four people on the panel, those two, Jackie and Marcel, who's doing the BSL. Yeah. But so that they feel like they are part of the same Zoom meeting. Okay. Okay. So you really want to bring, bring that home that these, in case they're missed, we can make sure that people feel that they are actually part of the Zoom meeting. There's two ways of doing that. Either we can break in suddenly, suddenly in in the performance itself, we stop sharing our vmix screen in the Zoom meeting, and we go to a kind of Zoom meeting performance, and then we go back into the vmix. So we're not actually simulating it at all. It's it's actually what's happening. That might be the that might be the better way to go with it. So literally, we stop. We move from the kind of program output for zoom and we go back into 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 to the zoom meeting i'm wondering if anyone else can... only... go on please go ahead jamie my fear there is that if the, if an audience member unmuted or turned on their camera and tried to participate or something it could get confusing which is sort of why i thought that it might be easier to create a template in vmix which is a screenshot of a zoom meeting and then drops the people's faces into it yeah yeah that's a good point just to avoid that problem of because I, otherwise i feel like it could feel slightly too interactive to the audience and people might not quite understand that they weren't suddenly participating yes yes what we can do that's true um i'm wondering i, I mean we're gonna i haven't got it yet we're gonna buy a zoom account and uh for this particular project i haven't got i haven't quite know the capacity the control mm. over it i would have does anybody else have any comments uh, sorry I, yeah I, I think you're able to control and limit uh, any audience input if you want to mute everyone you have control in zoom yeah so you know if, if that's a something we want to avoid we just uh, we just preset it you know i mean you can take it on on and off if we want to um you know welcome uh, audience interaction but otherwise we can yeah we can control that yeah yeah i mean alternatively right uh, the other way of course is to do exactly what we what it's a scene right now this picture here yeah. could could yeah. have a little bit of an overlay of it and could look like a zoom but but um yeah that's kind of what i was imagining okay we, but it, we, but it, it seems to me it would be very nice well uh Oh, sorry. Are you just to, but but it to have the real time images? So because all people always have a look at themselves on Zoom and kind of you know adjust things. And to, if you have have the re, the real time real time image, they so would. Have, they, yeah, I think they would be the same. But um, yeah. 
because they will see the same same image. So that so literally, what 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 will probably let people know if people are really curious and they'll think, hang on, is that is that somebody that's coming from? You know, are they in this meeting or are they in another meeting? They would probably look in their participant list or go or change their view. Anyone can change their view settings in in the Zoom, in a Zoom meeting. You have the right to change how you want to view it as gallery as as yeah. participants so in, in that level of interaction people can see who is in the zoom meeting and who isn't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you can also spotlight as the host though can't you to force people to see a certain thing exactly yes yeah let yeah. me have a little play around with it jamie i think there's a way of doing it but it sounds like it's because i think it's be quite it will be quite um it's really to give it that liveness, that sense of like, whoa, this really is a Zoom meeting. Oh no, we're back in that meeting. I'm not sure where we are. That that to me gives a much more sense of 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 the live inputness of this, or the sort of the, yeah. the the fact that the audience are watching something that is happening right now. Although then it appears, you know, suddenly then it changes to that kind of scene, mm. and they're there. And then it's like, well, okay, that that who's next? Who's who's next so, in this this space? <laughs> script wise, sorry, I've got a lot of windows open. This is going to take me a moment to pull up the exact version from my sent emails. I think no worries. Uh, just so that I have the um the correct can, one. Can I just make make a make a comment whilst whilst you do that? Just that, that I think yeah. It, I think Jamie's idea of starting with the Zoom and then this image comes in with him is is really effective. And I think you can get, sort of come in and in and out of that. I'm also wondering if uh, if the you know the the doctor and so, social worker, or whatever these characters are, if you can also overlay them to take to, to put them in the bed in in Jamie's perspective, so their heads replace Jamie's as, as when they do some of the speech. Uh, that, their speeches and uh, and so on, which might might give a sort of interesting perspective that they're putting themselves in his shoes, as it were. So the panel come in quite a few times in this in this segment, kind of at various different points. And I I guess what I was imagining was that so the very first panel scene would have even though only two of them are speaking, would always have all four of them in when it's panel. Um, so the first one, which is titled Act 2, Intro Dash Panel, um, we li we literally, we watch Edward like set up the Zoom and we watch the two people in the panel meeting um, very much as a Zoom. And then the next scene is the Zoom with the myself and the doctor and it's there that I was thinking about how we could double me. So if we imagine the doctor played by Matilda Rabini, yeah. where the bearded gentleman is, and then myself, both where I am now and doubled where the other gentleman is, so that we get the sense that I'm on a Zoom with the doctor. But there we get the sense that I'm very present. It's a more positive interaction. It's the interaction in which I have some autonomy. Um, <laughs> Because then later, when we go to long the uh, next panel scene, which is the one after bravery before paralysis, then I think that's where we maybe start thinking about more effects coming into the Zoom. The more that we've, um, the more that we've, kind of, once we've created the sense that the panel is not on my side, and that the audience might be aligned with the panel then we can play with that and break it up a bit more. Mm. But I kind of want to really get that sense of where are the audience situated in this piece? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think what you've just described and, and the comments that Steve made, I mean, the, 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 one of the, this is the kind of central chunk of the performance, really. There's, if, you, if it's almost in three parts, and we've got the first part, which is the kind of the scene we just looked at in the hospital. Then there's the whole series of interviews and panel discussions, and I've got you in this scene actually. The following one after this, but what what was what you're kind of alluding to, or, or, or sort of each one is commenting on, is that what's the what's the difference? What's the change? What's the chaoticness of that? How does that change 
through this through this 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 section. So in this bit, I know that you're having a conversation with the doctor, and the doctor is advising you about your um, your medication. You when 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 and where you need to take it, and you're and you're commenting with a kind of very sort of um, yep, got it. Yep, okay, I understand. Three times a day. It's just giving you just this long list of medication you have to have. So in this particular shot, I've got you not chroma keyed. So you're not you're not with a virtual background. You are actually in your yeah. in your actual bed where you are right now. Um, and then I've got you again in the in the middle here as the character in the center. You you, you talked about wanting to to have that to explore that option as well. But that's quite nice. I mean, we can. We, we, of course, we can zoom in and out. We, we can, we can do a transition of you full screen and then flip it back to the right, or have have the have the doctor come forward and go back, or have you come forward, or however you want. You know, we can move things around. Um, we could change the bot. We can change any characters you 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 wanted to have. Uh, literally, just just take them. They could just become in the center of 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 the actual let me just show you what some it's just just as an example i think i showed you this before but um bear with me just just to set something up very quickly to show you um what scene are we on scene seven two copy from scene seven two So I'm just doing two um, layers. Okay. So literally, it could we could do something where? Oh, sorry, not that one. Um, I can just move that. Move that person out to the front and then they could speak and talk Obviously, you may may or not be there in front of them but then they could we could then just move them back again into that space and do that quicker or slower so so they, they could play around with things like that you know there's, there's all sorts of things we could we could possibly do with it just as a little thought um How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? So, um, the next bit you want to look at. I mean, there's, just to show everybody, there's a whole. There's a, this is actually the scene itself. It starts with scene six, which is the first one here I mentioned. It goes. This is then. This is also part of scene. This is part of this scene. Um, the panel scene. Zoom, zoom begins, um, and then we go that one there, and then it goes to scene scene seven, which is uh, Act Two, Intro Instructions. Um, I think this is all part of the same thing, actually, Jamie, isn't it? There's not not a lot that happens in between there. Then we go. Um, the after Doctor Lawal's meeting room. Um. We have, we have my it's strange line in which maybe we the zooms fade out after I say I think I've got it, or maybe we freeze my face and Matilda's face yeah. as static and make me in the bed bigger and make some make them smaller something, mm -hmm. and then we cut back to the panel. And I kind of want that to feel incredibly abrupt and unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the next like performance section, but that cut back to the panel is meant to be really jarring. Yeah. Because you get this sense from the doctor that like there's a lot going on, and you get the sense 
you, you suddenly realise that you, you, you think back to the first panel scene that they're just talking about kind of ignoring everything the Doctor said and cutting my care anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's how we kind of transfer that that sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you, you mentioned the, the Doctor. Is it Michelle? What's the name? Uh, Matilda's the Matilda. actress. Matilda. Is that Matilda on screen now? Yeah. In the purple, the, the Doctor playing yeah. Dr. Lowell. Yeah, okay. That's Matilda. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've got uh this is this is the scene here okay and that's that that's part of the bravery scene isn't it then so now we have another panel bit and then we have bravery okay not really sure why i got that there panel before panel before bravery what's what's is that then dr edwards that's again? from yeah so that's dr edwards meeting room and again it's got those four zoom feeds with right. the two men we've seen so far plus Jackie and Marcel, who is the BSL signer. Okay. So yeah, that's Marcel. So whenever uh-huh. we've got uh-huh. a panel, we want all four of those faces. That one as well. Yeah. You want those the, those, they... those four? One, two, three. Yeah, in a kind of, in a kind of gallery oh, type. Sorry. So that whenever the panel's up, we can see all four of them. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and the social worker in that one. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so Jackie. Yeah, so... Those two, the man from the previous one and the man doing the BSL. Oh, right. I think I've got that. So what I've got there, though, see, I've, I've done this scene as well. This is where I bring them all in like this. But that might not be what ah, you so, want. So um, it's if you swap the one in purple for uh-huh. the BSL signer. Yep. And obviously okay. we need to be able to see his hands. Yeah, yeah. So Matilda is partic- is 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 not Matilda and is Purple is only the in the scene with me and the Doctor. Ah, so Matilda is not a member of the panel who are discussing your no. your your your, your um, no. care package. Indeed. Exactly. Got you now. I got you. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it's slightly different the way way it's set up. Okay, that helps you with the, with with thinking about this Zoom meeting. So in the Zoom meeting, it is the three panel members who are discussing their care package and the BSL translator. And yeah. Matilda appears quite separately in, in a Zoom conversation with you. And that's the only one, that's the only scene you really appear in in, in a Zoom conversation, really, isn't it? it, yeah. it the, the panel meeting I itself, never talk to the panel. No. Is that a private meeting they're having about you that you're that you're not, you're a kind of fly on the wall listening to that? Is that right? You're, yeah, you're, basically. I see. I they see. speak to me occasionally. But I don't ever speak to them. Right. Okay. Okay. Got you. Got you. That makes a lot more sense. So we can. I can do all of that. Make all that. And play around with some different ways we can. We can bring them in as that kind of Zoom meeting breaking up, collapsing down suddenly. Poof, back. It's a Zoom meeting again. Uh, let let let's let's have a little play around and see what we can come up with for that one. But that's useful to know. Um, we've got. I also had this scene still, but I don't know whether we're using this one at all. Does this is this going to appear anywhere? That glitch on the brave, the work, the tech. I, mean, I think so. I think I'd want to think a bit about fonts, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so that might be something we we might put in at a later at a later end in this. You might want to look at it all, get an idea of what the whole script looks like with all the scenes, and then if there are any graphic textual elements you want to put in. Like words you want to pick out, we we can then apply those and put them on top, um, and we can add glitch effect. We can do different things and make them, and then play around with them. Um, I've got you changing costume as well here. You're you're no longer in your in your bed uh, gown. You're actually dressed. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know whether you want that or not. That's something we did before. We played around with. Yeah, if we could, like I think that is my costume for the second section so it'd just be the best way of like getting me onto it or into it yeah okay lovely okay so then we go to we've got more of those ones again this is actually I'll just show you the um i've got these bits right pa interruption before paralysis and then i've got um panel after bravery before paralysis a couple more scenes of the zoom meeting 
that one, there was all four of them. That's quite a long Zoom conversation, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And then we go into paralysis, the scene called paralysis. And at that stage, we haven't, we just said you're going to be, okay, oh no, sorry, apologies. You're going to be on stage with two performers. Now, the two performers, or one performer, we weren't sure yet, um, that they would be remote on a green screen, calling in on vMix, so they're full, full body and can, and, and can interact with you, um, perform with you, that sort of thing. I'm not sure how long that scene how long that scene is or what let me have a quick look what you're saying in that scene. I mean this is the bit where we're doing the tele this is the sort of made the main sort of telepresence element from the last that we've explored previously. So we know we know we can do all of this, but we just need to make sure those performers or the or performer is on a green screen background and um, can can connect you and they would need need the necessary lighting and cameras to do that. Okay. Great. Okay, so let's move to the next one. I don't know if anyone's, if, um, just to make sure that everyone has got there. If, if you don't want, if you don't need to, if you wanted to speak, please unmute your microphone. If you are, if you don't need to, then just mute, mute your microphone. If you in between, if you don't. yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Paul. It's Steve here. Go ahead. Steve. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, Jamie. If you've already got a, a performer um, to do to do this scene, uh, but there was um, there is a provision in the you know in in, in the funding package for uh, a disabled performer from Singapore to uh, you know to to come to come into this. So I don't know. Um, if that might be an idea, obviously, if you have a port performer in mind, that's absolutely fine. But, but you know, the um, <laughs> in in Singapore, we we already have a you know a green screen studio and all of that, so it's quite easy for us for, to, to set up. But equally, um, I haven't um, I haven't sort of contacted specific um, uh, performers at, at the moment because I wanted to know that you know the type that you wanted and did you want a you know <laughs> a particular uh, male male or female. Uh, you know, did you want someone who, who might sing, for example, or or, or 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 whatever? So I wanted to talk to you about that. It doesn't have to be this performer. I'm just letting you know that there's that capability. That's super exciting. Just as a tiny digression from an organisational perspective, because I'm really trying to build links between Cryptic and international disability arts groups, international disabled artists, especially with an eye to how generous the British Council can be in funding collaboration work, honestly. And Absolutely. it's very possible We've been that there could be a link to a, a version of this in which the outgrowth in which I eventually turn the entire piece into a telepresence. And the reason that we chose this block of script was basically because it included as many of the techniques I thought we might want to use or show off as possible so that we could learn how to do as much as possible and that it would be a lot easier just to expand that to the rest. So I absolutely love the idea of bringing in a disabled performer from Singapore to play the role. It doesn't have any lines. It's just a movement role. Um, there could be something quite interesting if someone had any degree of dance experience and it would also okay. be unrealistic i think to cast a wheelchair user in the role because it would would be incoherent um okay. now the the other side of it is that generally speaking in the play that role is played by an actual person physically in the space because for example before one of the scenes we want to make sure that my catheter bag is empty in case it, in case i get dropped while being transferred to try and avoid a disaster. So that's emptied as part of another scene on stage so that we make sure that going into the next scene, that's in a good place. Um, that if my, so I've got some very time specific medication. So if that overlaps with the performance time, that the person is able to just do that injection as part of the performance. Okay. So we kind of 
I deliberately overlap that with the in-person role. Though, I suppose actually thinking about this telepresence version, the fact that we're only using, because part of the idea of this and of developing it this way is that while we'd want to do a good performance set up in a studio in a situation where I wasn't well enough to travel to a theatre, but where we could get the green screen set up behind my bed a bit, get some lights set up in here, run it all from my house, that it would allow me to still deliver a performance that would then be projected to a live theatre audience, possibly with the BSL interpreter live on stage, possibly not, as a kind of reserve option. So it only uses my head and neck anyway, really. So actually the person that was physically nearby, in case I needed anything during the performance, would be able to be instructed how to do everything while out of camera range. Thinking about it, because things like injections could be done without them ever coming anywhere near the, near the bit of my face that appears on screen. So then we could design this just with that telepresent performer. And the reason I mention the dance background is just because the, there are a few bits, particularly in paralysis, where one of the deliberate things we're playing with on stage is the fixedness of my body and the way that the carer moves around me and moves me. And so somebody who's got that kind of confidence and fluidity of movement to build that contrast would be would make a lot of sense okay okay well we can yeah i can yeah i can certainly i should well depending on availabilities and uh, and so on but there are there are um you know <coughs> um companies with with uh, disa disabled performers who are who are a movement and dance space so i can i can dis i can discuss discuss with them and, and then i think yeah if you're doing it purely virtual then you know, um, a person, if they're necessary for injection or, or other thing, physically can do that. I think there's also the option if you want to, a bit in, uh, as in the picture that, that Paul showed, if you want two performers, you could, you know, you could actually have one physically with you and, you know, and kind of meld in the virtual performer as well. But I mean, we, 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 we have flexibility. This is the wonderful thing about this, this technology and, and Paul's amazing kind of uh, designs. We're able, we're able to, to mix and uh, and, and put and put these things all, all together. I think bringing in a person physically with me, reflecting on what Paul and I discussed last session is probably a bad idea. Um, no. Just because if we're cutting out my face and neck, then it's going to get very complicated as to where they can oh. be in the shot. So oh, I sorry, think, forgive me. I'm just thinking that it makes more sense for the person who is physically in my room, meeting any of my needs during the show, to know how to stay out of shot and then sure. indeed to bring in perhaps one or even two people who are there for the motion and for that scene to make to really capture the meaning of that scene right okay great okay that, well that's fine i i can sort of um you know di discuss things with, with people and actually we have a um a lecturer uh with us who specializes in dance and disability just published a big book on it oh that's great and so, on. so she has all she has all the uh the connections yeah oh, i think just great. be sensitive about the idea that we're saying no wheelchair users because i would be i would be really hacked off if i saw that call out i'd be a bit like <laughs> why are you doing a call out for disabled people and not wanting any wheelchair users exactly um so i think it's the fact that it, with cryptic's ethos and the work we make we always have a kind of hard line that whatever role it is, we will only pay someone non-disabled if there isn't somebody disabled we could pay to do that work. So, ev so even though they're paying the carer, we might be looking at people who had learning disabilities, were neurodivergent, were amputees, were deaf, were, were blind, things like that, where it's not that they're playing a disabled character, it's that our ethos kind of requires that we not take somebody non-disabled if we can find somebody disabled. Yeah. This and is obviously a, in like partnership projects like this, that's not that this is a completely different thing because it's a partnership project. But that's just in terms yeah. of the way we work and why I would why I would want someone disabled very specifically, even though they're playing yeah. a non-disabled part. I think the okay. 
one of the great things here, was the, opp the opportunity here, is that uh, Steve is in Singapore, in the centre of Singapore. La Salle is a fantastic art school with really, really good resources. It's potentially possible someone could could come to La Salle to to perform to perform. We link, we then we then network with you over VMix, bring them into the mix. They have the opportunity to add lighting, um, other things they could do. Is that? Um, I hope I hope that's <laughs> Steve. That, that's yeah, right. yeah, sure. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the only yeah. the only limitation here is we have to remember is that they are eight hours ahead, which means whatever yeah. we do, has, has, we have to do it in the morning UK time. If we if we do an evening show, they have to get up very early hours of the morning or very late at night, whatever it is, but that normally early hours of the morning. So that's the limitation. So it might might mean that, that their live participation necessitates a, 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 a sort of a, 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 an AM performance in the UK. And I mean, I guess for this, it's also that this is kind of a sharing of the work we've done. And, you know, if I was if I was to take this as a telepresence piece, as a full piece, whether we ended up working with the same performer for that in three years time or not, would be a very different and open question, I guess. But also that for a sharing, doing a, a, a sharing at, on Zoom at, say, 1 p.m. UK time, with a 20 minute show where they weren't necessarily needed for any kind of discussion afterwards, they'd be able to be finished by 10 p.m. their time, if my calculations are right, which I think, you yeah, know, as long as we did right. like an, an early afternoon sharing of this work, of this show, um, which we would do both physically, probably somewhere like Camden People's Theatre and streamed, then we could do that at a time that worked for them as well. But knowing that if ever, we get this completed as a full telepresence show that if our shows are at 9 p.m. that we would end up needing to find somebody who could perform mm. at that time, whether it's the person we'd work with for this or not, like down the line in, in the future evolution, I guess, is my only concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it would be, depend on, on the performer and so on. I mean, uh, also because we need, you know, for the Green Team Studio, we need, you know, technici technicians and, uh, and people. I mean, it may not be impossible to do an evening show if everyone is willing. Yeah, great. We love it. You know, and, and you know, we're, we're all artists. We, we do things and we, 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 we get up late. But I mean, I think it'd be useful to try to, uh, to, to schedule, uh, you know, kind of initial shows for, yeah, so, some, something like think... what, one, you know, uh, tw 12 or 1 p.m. would be eight, eight, or, 8 or 9 here for us. I think the potential with these sorts of things, having worked with sort of time zone issues, is that you you, you can potentially do two performances to live audiences. <laughs> what one actually is a performance to a live audience at, at nine o'clock in, in in Singapore, nine p.m. in Singapore. Another one, another one, is is a is a um, you know the, the opposite way round, and there's a live performance in the UK or whatever. So 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 it's, it's about who who has to make the commitment. To sort of do to serve service the other person's li live audience timings which are normally evenings um so that's just the way to think of it i just want to qu quickly say hello to richard who's joined us hi richard hi. good to see you uh um, yeah. we, we're just just the... just tuning in to get a bit of a flavor i haven't got the whole morning but i thought i'd come for an hour or well, so thank you appreciate it no really appreciate it we're, we're, <coughs> we're already about halfway through and i'm actually going to mm -hmm. suggest we make a, t a short break um sort of temp Five, five, ten minute break. We can just switch, switch off, just switch off your cameras for ten minutes. We'll come back. What, what about we come back at half past ten? That gives us just, just, um, just under ten minutes, just to put. Mm -hmm. If we want, if you need to come for break, that sort of thing, um, and we'll carry on at ten thirty. Is that all right with you, Jamie? Do you need to do? You need longer, or do you need to do anything else later on? Or um, no, that that's absolutely fine. I think I'd I'd blocked out like nine to twelve for this. So okay, all right. Let's yeah, just have a short. Short break now, yeah. and we'll come back. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Just so you're aware, I, I may have to duck out of before course. before the absolute end because I've got I've got enormous amount amounts of work that I've got to get done Not by this all. evening. Not at all. Thank you, Steve. It's all, it's all recorded. It's all recorded. I'll be back. For a while. Great. Okay. Thank Great. you so all much. Right.
you. I'm back. You back there, Tom? You're good. Excellent. Great. Hey there. Um, there we go. No problem at all. Good. So um, we'll just get started again in a moment. So Steve, just keep me keep me keep, uh, keep me updated on any uh, developments with with what we're just talking about your end on that one. Great. <coughs> yeah, um, I mean it'd be be good possibly. Hi again, Jim. We we're just talking about um, you know the uh, potential perform in Singapore. <coughs> so I, I understand what what you want, not a wheelchair user, but and some confidence and fluid, fluidity of movement, so you can get um, you know some interesting sort of <coughs> interactions and uh, and dance and so on um yeah is there uh, any I was, for, for male or female saying, or nope absolutely no, no preference gender age size oh. ethnicity all of that is completely completely flexible oh. um oh. as long as basically the the thing is could they could they feasibly play a character who is perceived as as a carer within within a scene that's the kind of okay um okay in terms of movement okay. i was thinking a yeah. bit more because i looked at that bit of the script and actually so that they would be the bravery section is basically solo um yeah. so their role would be in paralysis so it's not so much any need for a trained dancer it's just somebody who is vaguely happy to move. Okay. But, 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 yeah, but would it be useful to get a dancer who, you know, is kind of uh, expressing themselves themselves or whatever, or, or it, it yeah, sorry, from what you were saying before, uh, and sorry, I, I haven't uh, had, had, the, had the script or, or been able, able to read it yet. I so, but it, 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 they're, they're, care, they're caring physically for you. So, they're interacting with you, uh, you know, sort of obviously virtu virtually, but but phys physically. Is that sort of turning your body or, or what sort of, just so I'm able to brief them a bit. Let me just, um, let me, because it's very short, because we're just doing this kind of section of the whole piece. Let me yeah. just try and see what happens if I, there we are, that's just pasted. The D bits are just the dialogue number for the line, um, but I put it in the chat. Oh, is there? You got you got chat on there. Okay. What you can, what I'll do, Jamie, is I'll sh if I if I can share your script with with yeah, with go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I just I thought can... I'd put it there so that it was under people's noses. Um. And if you maybe also, Paul, share any footage from the shows you think people would find useful. Okay. Basically in the actual physical show for this section i'm moving around the stage in my chair but my body is static within the chair i can show you a and scene. they're moving around me with a lot more motion right. so this is a mock-up of that scene um yeah what what they can do jamie's in, we can actually place that that performer we could we could make them walk up doing some careful uh, cuts seamless seamless cuts we can make them move walk in front of you and then wrap around behind you and then yeah they... so, so so they actually it gives a three-dimensional sense that they actually are are walking around you and they're not they're not just a kind of sort of cut out layer just in front all the time but they can also be behind and we can change their scale and if they have a, a large enough green screen area they can walk back and then, then we just sort of cut and place the place them behind you, and then and we simulate a kind of movement around you. So I can share all that. I'll share scripts and and footage. I, I can't do it right now. I'll, so I will after following this session. Um, I'll share it all with the team, um, so they can actually get it. Get it. And it's really helped me looking at your material. 
really, really helped me get a much more. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, having watched it quite a lot, I'm very familiar with the scenes and the lines now. So that's it. It's really useful to look at that. Okay. Okay, that, that, that's helpful. And I can, yeah, try and uh, <coughs> look at uh, some, you know, someone who'd be, be, in, be interested. It'd be great. Wonderful. Yeah. Let us let us then carry on. Um, I think we're, we're sort of um, the one scene we haven't looked at after paralysis. There is a there is a short um, uh, after par paralysis before discretion. I think that there is another bit of um, panel meeting as well. Um, Again, these are all the, all these panel meetings we're going to look at, but um, so there's an, another bit of panel meeting, and then it goes into discretion, um, which is the next scene, the final scene, and this is the scene that um, we're going to have uh, the BSL DL trans uh, and translator with Jamie, and I've just put you actually in this scene, Jamie. Oh, I think there's audio on here. Do you want? Probably don't want that. Oh, hang on. Uh, oh, I know what's happened there. <laughs> don't worry. Let me, let me find a bit of video. It's 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 come to an end. It needs to be on loop um, and refresh with the scene start. Bear with me just two seconds. I'll just do that again for you. Um, so let's just make DL. Uh, automatically start with transition and there is audio on here isn't there but we want the audio off so I'll make sure um, oh no sorry that's the wrong one oh. that's the right that's the wrong one uh, let me try and find it this one we put in, aha, uh -huh. is this the scene? This is it, this is it. We're going to loop, take the audio. We want the audio off here, don't we? Is there is there an audio on this one? Let me have a look at this again. I think, so, I think the idea is that I'd be doing the audio live and yeah. DL would be doing the BSL. Okay. Um, but I think probably it wouldn't be in the hospital room. Okay, right. But in the, like, on stage, uh -huh. in yeah. costume. Um, one of the things I was playing with was what we have behind me and whether it's words or whether it's doodles appearing as if on the stage behind me. I hadn't quite, I just think about what, what this, what this software kind of offers us that we can do. Yeah, sure. We can put, we can put you on, uh, you know, we can put this scene back in on, on stage. Um, at the moment I've got DL as, um, a recorded video which we can continue to use but that that yeah. particular, but i when we met on tuesday you asked me if i could possibly change the color of dl's uh top i it's very very hard to change a um a black yeah uh, material into a color um what i was thinking was whether dl should be standing behind something Okay. Instead of us trying to add legs to them. Yes, yes, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the does... problem is their signing space, that their hands would always need to be in front of whatever. Like, so looking at the lowest point that their hands drop to during that. Hmm. Which yeah, is yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. making sure that whatever, yeah, that their hands are never obscured. I, I can show all the video... The, the complete video that's available to me, I can show all of that. And as you say, it, it, it's it's to creatively play with something. So the idea is we don't want DL to look like a kind of, um, uh, we want to integrate DL into the performance is, in that sense. Is that right? You don't want it to look like a kind yeah. of augmented add-on. Uh, basically, the ch or, or we go hyper-augmented instead. I think the challenge, and this is something that I don't, I don't know enough to say, is how easy it would be to, I guess, split the layers 
so that DL is split into a head, mm. shoulder and arms and a separate torso because their arms have to come in front of their torso and in front of where their legs would be but there are no legs so it's how we do that because my other thinking if we could do something like that was that we fade out the bottom of their torso so that they appear almost a bit like a ghost in the scene and if basically what's the best way of making DL look good when we can't hide any of their hands at any point mm. and we don't have any legs that's our challenge yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. we get DL to refilm this, which is the other option. We could just commission them to refilm. We have we have a little bit of um, extra budget for BSL specifically. So, it, it, if there's a diff, if there's an issue around doing that, we could we can certainly assist in that area. I think it would help if DL could be recorded as full body in costume <laughs> whatever costume you wanted it just make it would make, make your life whole much a whole lot easier to play with it uh, and, and yeah. keep it in you know i just if, if you wanted to if you if you want so to I continue guess, with this we can as well we could do both but but um i guess so there's two questions here one is dl's role throughout because in the general version dl has always delivered bsl for the full piece yeah yeah or in the more recent, like, the, the the aim of the actual show is for it to be delivered by DL and I. Mm. Now, for most of it, we've got the translation from English into BSL. But for this scene specifically, we rewrote the English and the BSL so that DL and I could deliver things completely in time and really smoothly. Mm. So I kind of don't want to film DL doing BSL for the whole thing. Right because the rest of the time it's going to look a lot worse basically mm -hmm. um so i wonder if we just caption the whole thing rather than try to have bsl for all of it and then film dl doing the bsl for this bit again because this is kind of a proof of concept mm. that this also demonstrates what the bsl could be once we've been able to rewrite the whole show bilingually mm -hmm. would that make sense that makes perfect sense and i think you know it isn't it this is this is an experiment to, to find things out so i don't think we need to push ourselves to try and do you know have bsl for, for, the, for the entirety of it but if we're going to explore bsl in the in in the most integrated and creative way possible in this particular scene i think that would that would be useful yeah. as a resource for others to look at and say well that's that's another way of, of using bsl so it would allow us to really think about what we can do with BSL in this particular scene here. Um, because right. you've already rehearsed this with, with DL and you know it very well. You know the timings and all the rest of it, all the, all the sorts of problems around, around doing it. So let's just focus on this scene. And as you say, captioning is absolutely fine. We can, at a later stage for the recorded version, we can add an additional layer if if we wanted for those people that, that did want it just for just for that kind of for for that sort of inclusion and accessibility uh issue around around it as a finished piece so we um paul can i ask a question sure please go ahead richard yeah yeah because i haven't got the script and i'm not sure where we're going with this what's in a nutshell what's the the theme of discretion as a scene what what's the idea of that Jamie, over to you. Uh, so it's basically the second half of the first half of the show is very much about what it means to confront one's own mortality in a situation yeah. where survival isn't very expected. The second mm. half is about what it is to then survive mm. and how you end up living in the world. And so with that, you cut between my character's life in the world, which has seems like discretion, seems like paralysis that we've just looked at, a scene mm. called Reasons to Shag a Cripple, etc. And then that's cut in very sharply against the scenes with the panel discussing care funding and quality of life. And it, as you come towards the end, you realise that the panel are trying to return the care package which was the reason that I nearly died at the beginning. So you get mm. that very circular nature. 
So discretion with these scenes were very much about like about that that clash between life and barriers, I guess. Um, I'll just copy again. Uh, there's going to be some annoying bits of stage direction in this, which please just ignore. But I can at least again paste the lines into the chat so that people have access to them. Would it, um, would it tell me if, sorry, it's right. basically about about so that the premise is that I should have been able to go to the panel meeting to make my own case. But on the day, the lift had broken, so they they wanted me to just send in a video. And it's kind of about drawing out the ways that that highlights the reality of living in the world. Yeah. My, why I was thinking about it with my disability history hat on, you talked about the background, what we weren't sure what would be there. I, this may put it completely away from the dramatic tension you're trying to create, but is it worth putting up some images of, of the wider issues historically, or does that take us off the territory? But it's something that we could, you know, I could find some images you could look at and see if we wanted to put them in there. I think that's it, a really would, interesting would... concept. I used to perform it wearing a piss on pity top. Like, yeah. There was always meant to be a very deliberate link here to that heritage. Yeah. So I think that could be a really interesting, you know, kind of very like faded sepia protest type things. Yeah, yeah. That Just get to the show sense that... that they're really old yeah. photos, but you also get the sense that actually same fight 30 years later yeah, yeah absolutely that and it also gives the audience the idea this isn't just an individual yeah thing it's been repeated thousands of times over and at different times you know that that because, was my thought and one of the reasons for bringing in all of the stuff about the social care panel was because i was a bit like i am honestly getting a bit sick of disabled people doing shows about their lives it's like, mm. can we not try and do something a bit more exciting, please? Can we not make bigger points? Can we not be allowed to do more? And so for me, it was bringing that in was an attempt to contextualize and turn it from a piece about my own emotional journey of surviving to the ways in which it becomes clearer and clearer throughout the show that for me, my body is genuinely is not the biggest barrier and that having the wrong care package is far more of a problem mm. and to really like to really emphasize the social model without sitting yeah. down and explaining it to an audience so yeah this was the rewrite of the show to bring in the panel was a deliberate attempt to cite it mm. in a political context and take it away from just being personal mm. tragedy and overcoming which frankly i think is boring yeah i yeah, agree with you but that's why I thought it might be useful. I mean, if you look, I could look. So, yeah, that would be brilliant. And send them along. Especially over stuff that we've got the right to use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'd be very helpful, Richard. Please do do mm. send us uh, any any images and things. Okay. I, I will send you the script, so you have you have the script. Yes, that would be helpful. And, then <laughs> and, some, and some footage as well. I mean, this this scene is it's a very visual scene that Jamie's describing, mm. the lift. The sparkling lift, the imagining this, this mm. uh, celebrating this lift that you're going that Jamie talks about. Um, so it's quite visual. There's quite lots of visual elements in here that we could also play with. Yeah, and I mean, after <coughs> that script isn't. I've just realised that script isn't quite right. Okay. Chris, mm. Chris, are you here? Chris is here. Yeah, I'm in. Right, brilliant. Cool. Sorry. Um, could you, as a priority dig out and send round the the English rewrite of that script that matches the BSL. Uh, yeah, sure, right now. Cool, I'll have a look for it. Thanks, it's going to be the one we used when we did the R&D in Bristol. Yeah, 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 I remember. Or the one we I'm made. Sure. Amazing, thank you. It'll be somewhere, basically. <laughs> um, just because we rewrote that section so that the English would match the grammar. So, for example, rather than we would paint them red and neon, I think it became we would paint them gold and sparkly because that was easier to sign in a really dramatic way. 
Mm-hmm. And I think there we could add sparkles coming from DL's hands, for example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's possible. Like, really dramatise it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's just uh, to add the background. In the run up to the budget, there were lots of Tories speaking out, and so, uh, particularly for kids with SEN saying, well, we don't think they've got it. It's their parents that are the fault. We don't have to provide this. Really horrible things have been going on. And there is definitely a move on the right of the Tory party to, to cut a lot of this funding, which they see as unnecessary. We're getting into the territory of useless eaters, really. And it, it, this eugenicist uh, idea is always there in the background of, of the Tories and the, the system. And particularly given the level of cuts that the Chancellor created yesterday that he have, will have to make, it's going to have a big impact. So, that, I mean, that's stepping back even further, but, you know, it's a thought. Yeah, that, that, that's frightening to hear. And, and I, I think <clears throat> I just wanted to make the, make the point for what it's worth that, um, you know, we've worked, Paul and I have been working for a few years on this uh, Telepresence mm. Stage project. And, and what, what's often interesting is that theatre companies and dance companies that we're working with are actually kind of realising, oh, it, it's a sort of spur to creativity whereby you say, oh, let's do some different things. Uh, and just mm. with, with Richard talking about these historical photos and making sort of collages of those more documentary as opposed to, you know, kind of, Jamie, you are, you know, knowing your work is kind of this wonderful uh, theatricality and so on. But, mm. uh, but I think actually embracing these ideas and bringing in a sort of suddenly, you know, a more historical collage or documentary sort of elements may may be very interesting to do and uh, and it's sort of sparking departures for people and, and that i think that's one of the common themes we we, we felt i'm just making a comment i'm not saying you must do yeah, this you must I do that but uh, it, it, it does open open us up new with to new ideas so a, a, a question slash provocation slash idea in the first half that we looked at we've got that hospital scene with all of the doctors and that slightly collage element, et cetera. Could we here do something that kind of mirrors that, only the backdrop is things like protest images, text, quotes from MPs, et cetera, and the figures that are around me that my face never appears on, but that are kind of there are people from those days and from those protest movements and things. Um, I know a handful of people, uh, Dennis Queen, Liz Carr, etc., who mm. would probably be quite happy to donate a photo of themselves in front of a green screen for us to put onto it. And I'm sure that other people involved in the project will know far more people than I do. Uh, but if mm. we could just get photos of people from those protest movements I suppose they wouldn't even need to be in front of a green screen because they'd be static, so we could just, yeah, yeah. just cut, cut them out. Them out. Mm-hmm. Then we could get that sense that yeah. these they... like semi-present, semi-ghostly figures behind me and behind DL and I are the kind of ancestors of the movement. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can, you can, who, also... who did all the Dan demos who might be worth getting hold of because he'll have the copyright on the pictures, so that would be quite helpful. Who will, sorry? There was a photographer, I forget his name now, but I'll dig it ah. out, who, who had cerebral palsy, but he did a lot of all the Dan demos for about 10 years. He was on all of them taking pictures and things like that. I think he might have yeah. some quite interesting pictures. And that would get us around it if he has the, the copyright on them. And I'm sure he usually allows these things to be used for these sorts of purposes. That would be quite easy. So I'll try and I dig him it... out. I met him last year again, so... If we were bringing in any of the, so for those photos, definitely. I think with where we've got the doctors in the first scene, where we've got these like cut out collage pictures of doctors around the hospital bed. If we were bringing in actual pe- pictures of people to make them as individuals very present, I'd probably want mm. their consent, if at least if they were alive, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Because it, mm. I feel like, you know, if you see like, Dennis Queen, Alan Holdsworth and Liz Carr appearing on mm. stage who yeah. feel more like their characters because we've got this weird telepresence. I would definitely want them to have had the chance to read the bit of script that they would be with and to be like, yes, mm. here's a photo of me that I'm happy for you to use here. 
rather yeah, than yeah. just rather than getting the copyright and then using it because we could. Mm -hmm. Sure. I don't know, and, but I mean and, that's. But yeah. I think definitely for protest photos and also perhaps for constructing a little list of people to ask whether they would be happy to have their image used in that scene. I don't think it'd I mean, be quite we, interesting. If we can get photographs mm. of them, Jamie, that'd be great. I mean, if, if there's any way, I mean, we can cut them out, but if just on a technical point of view, if the, the, the more plainer background we can put them on, the better. It makes the job so much easier. If they're on a very yeah. busy background, it just becomes a lot more work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and and the other thing you can do is just think of of the image of you, whether you know, how, however it is, in the bed without doctors around or whatever, or in the wheelchair, or whatever, uh, and then ju just make the full screen behind you these Im these protest images and so on. You see what I mean? So yeah, you, or, you were just uh, in that. Yeah, what I was kind of imagining, Paul, could you possibly just? I'm not good at visualizing things if I can't see them. Sure. Could you possibly bring up the image that had? me and the two carers in it sure. on the stage for a moment yeah yeah just so that i can try to explain what's in my head i've got a dreadful visual memory so then what i'm kind of imagining is we're maybe slightly more zoomed out hmm. the area that is the backdrop yeah has these like black and white and sepia toned images hmm. photos quotes etc as if projected onto that backdrop mm -hmm. a long way behind us. And then kind of like we've got these two images of, I think they're both Sophie mm. standing up on the stage, but that feels like she's there with me. Yeah, sure. But that's, we that's bring in possible. kind of maybe like two thirds opaque mm. pictures of people from the protests. Mm -hmm. So mm. we can see that they're not quite there but they feel like they're they're standing on the stage rather than being projected onto the background. Mm -hmm. One of the things to quickly, quickly think about it is it was perfectly that's absolutely all possible. One thing to think about is also what what if we do record uh, DL again, and I, I would I would propose we do. Um, what is DL also wearing? That that, sit, that, that, that that situates DL within that scene, rather than looking like a kind of add-on, you know, not non. But but maybe they're are they in costume? Are they wearing something? Is there a, do, do they have on a kind of piss on pity T-shirt on or what? What what are they? What is their contribution to the mix? I think I think in a, mm -hmm. in, a in a creative way. Um, I think art. Uh, their clothes are partly set by what what makes bsl signing really clear okay yeah, um sure. they have i have some costume for them in our storage locker um but i think if they were able to be wearing something that mirrored what i'm wearing mm. so silver shoes ripped black jeans silver top and maybe a leather jacket that would work quite well for capturing that in that scene they and I are the same thing. Great. Yeah, yeah. So you might need like a new... t-shirt, I think. Sorry, Richard, go ahead. You might need a darker t-shirt because I think the hands yeah. would not be that clear against that background you've got there, that that t-shirt. Yeah. <clears throat> we can yeah we can obviously that that will be our the the clarity of the bsl translation is is a priority and we should we shouldn't lose that for sure when, when, when we put this scene together um but yeah the the, the, the more in, it's just that i'm really trying to push that kind of feel that they are part of the scene that they're not just a sort of that, that actually without if they're not there you're missing something, regardless of whether you understand BSL or not. They, 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 they have they have a they have a role to play in all of this. That's the thing, and that's why we rewrote it so that um, just for everyone else's presence, Paul, I talked about this briefly, so that the idea is that now with those lines, DL is signing the same thing I am saying at the moment of the key points and the signs that are very recognizable. So lift, broken, paint, 
those signs look like the word I'm saying. So the idea is that it feels perfectly timed so that even if you're only understanding one of the two languages, everything that the other person is doing on stage is still relevant to you. Yeah, yeah. I I really got that, I and mean, it's really clear, and, and, it, and it really helps in, in my understanding of it. I've learned, learned to learn just watching it a few times. I've learned, learned that much, <laughs> and it's been really useful. Okay, how are we doing for time? Is there anything? Um. So I'm just wondering, Jamie, some of the things I've done already for you, is there anything, I mean, we've recorded a lot of this, so I'm going to look, I, I can now, I know that you're going to now, you know, you're, you, you're away, you've got your hospital appointment next week, and then you go, you're a little bit, you know, sort of recuperating for some weeks. I can be working on a lot of these things and helping out and gathering images from everybody and talking with Richard, Steve and others about and, and Jane and I can have a chat and things and start to develop the scripts a bit more. I've got your script. Are there elements that I have done before that you might want to consider? Just to remind us which ones they are. They're the sorts of um, and thinking I'm thinking the wing, the wings. <laughs> I, I, do you want to use these in any any of this? I know they don't normally appear in the scripts as they currently are, but do you want to use any of this el elsewhere in the current script? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Don't worry. Right, so um, let me just. I'm just sending a quick note, writing a quick note down. Um, so I was just like a very quick email sure. to Chris to leave um, the getting DL, getting the budget worked out with you and getting DL commissioned on Chris's plate yeah. um, okay. so that that could be done while I'm gone because no I realised that doesn't need me. Do that so now. then going through this, um, let me go back to, sorry, I've got several different things open in order to follow all of this. So. I no think no the wings I was going to use for this at the end of, um, so uh, the, going with I contain hurricanes, because that's when I would usually use the wings anyway. Is that in paralysis? No, it's, no, if it's in D41. So the last bit of the first part, we've had the collage, we've had the doctors. Fade away, I'm on an empty, bleak, lonely stage. D40, okay, D41. I've got 44, I don't have a 41. Let me, no, uh, sorry, I may I do, have I do, old... I do, I do. Sorry, apologies, I've got it, I've got it here. On the, on the, on... I've just put it in the chat as well. Again, okay. like, it's it's just bad, it's badly formatted, but it just means that everyone can see the bit. Yeah, yeah. Because we've got the bit where my face is on every single doctor's face for the you're just not trying hard enough and then i guess for me oh, i gotcha. shatter that entire medical scene yeah. with the i am trying hard enough line mm. and then that's what the wings were originally for was for, was for this section yeah so yeah d36 to d41 yeah the i contain hurricanes we get like the wind the smoke the wings. And you want sounds of hurricanes as well. Possibly, but well, we maybe birds with the beating wings. Yeah, um, yeah. But we could also get the sound design commissioned, I think, at our end. Yeah, We've got yeah. a lot of it already in various places. Okay. Um, Chris, could you make sure, could you try and get together the audio files from the, if you if you write write this down because there's two very separate yeah, things, the audio soundtrack from the up composed by CN from the commission from the R and D that we developed at Grey Eye and filmed, and separately the audio 
created by Julian Starr for the Manchester version of the play. Yeah. Thank you. That's basically we've got two different soundtracks for the piece. One that was more designed for the film version and one that was more designed for the theatre version. But I'm just thinking that those files might be a useful reference point, but that we can also probably get the like the wings and wind sound stuff done at our end. So some of the other bits and pieces we looked at, we did some other words for you. Now this we don't doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be this word, but this there might be words that you want to have in the para, in, in the um the final scene. You know, so you talked about having having the um, uh, discretion, indiscretion scene or other scenes, you might want to have words in. So we, we, we had that initially, that's from one of the words that you had in there, but we can play around with other things as well. I know that you have at the end of, actually at the end of it, you have, you have this title, don't you? You have that. I don't have a quality. I don't have yeah. quality under this law. That seems to fit. I could do. I could do something. Um, or quite... I can't remember if that line has changed slightly in the in the BSL version. But I think Chris had found the script for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I sent around. I've sent you an email, Paul, with the updated script. Oh, fantastic. Okay, lovely. Chris, did you send it to me as well? Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. So we can play around with other sorts of words, and similarly to how this is done, uh, there's other 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 sorts of effect, other sorts of um, you know treatment of the text as a, as a graphic a graphic layer. What could we what could we do with it? Um, how could we make that 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 work for you in different ways? Um, I think that's pretty much all of the layers that I looked at before for you. I mean, the, the, I think the other ones, they're really just graphics, really. It's just what, what graphic elements you want to drop in throughout the, in, throughout the entire performance. If there's other bits of graphic element. Um, I mean, I can piece it together. So, oh, oh, can, Steve, come can I just, if, Yeah, if, if you just go back to the inspiration yep. um, graphic, yeah, I mean it, that's kind of um, so with no disrespect. It's kind of cheap, uh, cheesy sort of um, um, X factor or whatever. Mm. I mean, I, I think that if if you use that that kind of that 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 kind of graphic, I think the sort of piss on pity or reasons to shag a cripple or whatever are kind of a better to to to, to use that kind mm, of thing mm, mm, with, mm. to give it more humour, sure. you know, and and to, yeah. to make that kind of the irony and and so on, yeah. Yeah, so, I think this this yeah. came from some marketing shots we had done, um, right? With various quote, with various things that were kind of designed to highlight that sort of ridiculousness. So that's where the use of inspirational for the graphic came from. So that was yeah. the 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 inspiration for the graphic came from our end rather than Paul's. But oh. I agree that it hey, may not be the right thing no, to show. No, I just thought I, I no, just no, wanted it, to clarify that in terms of where the idea had come from because I didn't. Because I realised it could look a bit politically odd without the context that we'd sent the yeah, graphic yeah. over. It, it's similarly to why Brave has, has a glitch in it. Brave is glitching. Yeah, out yeah, yeah. Because because yeah. it's brave. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it comes in that same same part. An inspirational yeah. was seen in the same light as the brave. So yeah, yeah I get what you mean. It's just, there is a no, no. Of... I mean, it works. I just kind of you know maybe look at look at yeah, yeah, lot, yeah, yeah. Lots which, of which... Types of text. But this is a much. This is a much more provocative text to to work with. I like I like that. It's a sense of yeah, yeah. Do, do a lot more with that one. Yeah, definitely. I wonder whether, um, just like in terms of what we've got left in this time mm. and what what we've got left to do, just because I'm aware that. I'm not really going to be present to easily answer questions that come up about the design, mm. whether it's worth, and again, I don't know if this necessarily need, needs everyone, but whether it's worth Paul, Chris and I, and anyone else who, who would be needed for this bit, just going through a kind of storyboard and 
making sure that we've kind of all worked out what we're doing at each point so that when we come back together we don't then discover that actually we've been working in very different directions on things that don't quite cohere. Mm. That would make that would be helpful for sure. Yeah, do you think I I know that I would find that that a kind of yeah, yeah 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 just because in the past I've I I found that it it one often one one kind of can end up in a position where you've done loads of work and then you kind of have to go back yeah yeah and change things and that I always find it really useful to know exactly who is doing what when with projects so that if anything needs working out it's all kind of worked out. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. What, what? I'm not sure what the best way to do that is. <laughs> How do we do that? Uh, to, to sort of put the storyboard to, to sort of work together. Whether it's, um, I don't know, whether we we do a kind of shared whiteboard. Is there some technology we could use, or do we just try to try and just sketch some things down or make make notes of a conversation? What do you? What what? What's your preferred way of doing this, Jamie? What would you? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, because I'm not such a visual person, I tend to do things in quite a text-based way, mm -hmm. but that's, yeah, that's completely, that's like, I'm very happy to do it yeah, in yeah. another way if preferred. Um, it, it may be, it may be, Paul, if I might, might suggest that because, you know, you, you've now, um, well, with all, with all, all these bags, you've got you've already got a storyboard you can put together. Is it, it and and there's been various uh, ide ideas prof profit in in this session to 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 kind of um, put you know just put some screen grabs of the various the various images and the various the various options in some sort of sort of order in relation to, J to to Jamie's script so that so that it's you know it's very clearly. Uh, you know, marked as a you know in storyboard form or in lin in linear form, mm. and then and, and then that become becomes the basis on on which you're you know you're you're, you're structuring the the visuals, and then seems to be uh, Jamie saying Jamie Jamie and Chris just you know work with you in an, another session to sort of um, formalize what what might be best to do. Yeah, I mean, I've got this. I've, it's it's really attaching. It, it could be something we could do off. Like I could, I've got your script. I could put some sort of image that Steve is saying. I could put a kind of um, a kind of what, not track changes, but do another column to the side of it to show you in within those scenes. These are the images that I currently imagine, or describe the images that I haven't got, but currently just describe what's going on based on our conversation. I've got everything recorded today. So I could then, um, I'll go back through the recording, capture all the bits we've talked about, um, and, uh, and then just give you images for each bit of the text. And you could then change or, or comment and say, that maybe that's maybe this image or that image, and um, that sort of thing. I think... Uh, Sorry, yeah. Jamie, Richard? Yeah, I've got to go in a minute. So I just want to know what's the time scale if I was going to dig around for some images to send to you, Jamie, and to Paul, uh, yeah. which might fit the when when do you need those by to, to realistically include them in this? Um would Jamie it's a bit Jamie, what what's your your timing now? It's, it's a little bit like the next few weeks you're gonna be I will we won't we won't be so, having another, another session for what until They've said that I will be off work for somewhere between two and twelve weeks. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Which is really unhelpful. I think realistically, <laughs> I'm imagining that I'll be off for somewhere between four and eight weeks. Yeah. Um, possibly with some staged return in that time. Mm. Um, but that will be kind of prioritizing statutory oh. obligations and things first. So I think it's probably going to be towards the end of April that the really that we realistically will be will be having another session. So I can prepare. So if I work this. towards that a week before that to get them round to people, would that work? 
middle of April would be good. Would be good, Richard. Yes, I can okay. then you can send it to me, and I can start to discuss with with Jamie, with Chris, okay. and Steve, and others, and just. I mean, I'm thinking just to, before I go, I'm thinking of sort of going back further into this a whole, a few his really historic images plus the sort of movement against that. But you can then choose which of those you you, you would fit your ethos and what you're doing. But I'll, I'll dig some out. But and I'll make sure that. Uh, that uh, where there's any individuals that uh, they're happy for that to to be, be there to follow what you said, Jamie. Okay, that's great. All right. Yeah, thanks. basically. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I've got this. I've got the the email that um, Chris has uh, the, the script that Chris forwarded. Just trying to download it now. How do I download? It's a Google Doc. How do I download this? <laughs> Never work it out with these Google Docs. I'll get it later. But this is, but this to be, to, just to be clear, this what you've sent us, Chris, is just the new version of the discretion. Um, yeah. So scene. yeah, this is the version that we worked on at May okay. to ensure that it's the exact timings of the performer I sent you. Got you. So it's, a, it's only a page, page, isn't it? Sorry, Jane, go ahead. No, it's just something that I keep thinking about that I just, I don't know if it's it's helpful at all, but I was just thinking about when you move this performance into a kind of digital virtual space, just the kind of thinking around how bodies move um, or are moved, um, particularly disabled bodies, um, and a lot of the scripts, kind of the lift that's not working and the things that are, kind of carers are, are doing and um like i think practically i've been thinking about how um people people are brought in and how they're moved but also kind of conceptually in terms of some of the ideas um they're trying to get across that those things also seem to speak to that and i just wondered if there was i don't know any further other ways of thinking around around that if that makes sense because it's quite different the body on the the screen to in, in the so space. one of the things that i've always worked on with this has been that i've never wanted a show that relies on any physical capacity i can't reasonably expect to have in the next like i don't want to be at a point where in a few years time we're trying to put on a show that i'm no longer physically capable of performing as structured yes. so one of the big things that we've played with is that i am completely static throughout that I I don't I I don't move. I have only moved. Yeah. And then yeah, I was just quite interested in when it's on the virtual space that there there does seem but I guess that staticness is still is still there maybe. I don't know. I was just And I think also the other thing that i'm thinking with that is that we're only ever going to see my head and shoulders in terms of the live bit of me okay thank you yeah maybe it's not as as relevant as i thought i was thinking so i think it very happened. much no, it really is. It's, and it would be really interesting. I think if I was developing a version where we were projecting me from a studio, it would be a very different set of questions. And I think one mm. of the things I'd toy with playing with there is puppetry and my limbs on strings and things. But uh, <coughs> Paul, you're mute, by the way, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> and what we can do, of course, um, is augment, um, you know, anything on top of Jamie as well. So, so 
although we are restricted, Jamie's going to be very much restricted to his head and shoulders, which is interesting from what we're doing here, because Jamie has, has currently is self-isolating, is restricted in terms of what uh, he can do. He's working from, from home. Um, it's not, it hasn't got the, anyone to sort of assist in any kind of studio work right now. So that's that we're working with the absolute minimum of what Jamie, Jamie could potentially do. But what we're adding is what with what we could we could digitally we can add anything we like we can do anything so we can put Jamie in in a uh, uh, in the wheelchair on the stage in the hospital bed um, we could and we could do anything do anything we want and anything Jamie wanted to do so we could put Jamie into those scenes in, in conceivable ironic in any way playful. Uh, poignant you what you want to want to want to arrive at you know we can try and sensitively deal do it appropriately it doesn't we don't want it to look kind of naff we want it to look, it to look important why why you're doing it you know at the same time so so um yeah i think they're they're there for, to explore and I, I just m must mention and maybe i'll send you something jamie uh, uh paul if you check pass off jamie's email I, I really love the uh the thing you put in in the text about you know uh, my body contains hurricanes and and crucible of gold and the smoke absorbing chocolate and i don't know if you're uh, i have this my hero is antonin arto uh, who's a french theorist of um of theater uh, and he has a poem uh, that that kind of is like that where he says you'll see my body explode into fragments and reassemble as a new body with, that you will never ever be able to forget me and things and uh, I'll maybe send you that 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 quite interesting poem by, by him. That would be interesting. Yeah, please do. I've not heard it before. I'll, you, do. I'll put you. I'll send you if you haven't got it. You might have it on a list, Steve. I'll send you an email. Sure. That sounds like right, cool. poem. Copy me in. Will do. Will do. It's a great poem. There we are. I've um, I've also gone through um, and into the into the PDF where I'm going to try and put some notes from Shun. Um, I've also put in. Um, I've updated the script. Okay. So. I think what we did with one of the companies, it was quite previously with the previous project, we did work with a, they drafted a script and we did kind of create a kind of template for how we sort of put scenes in and stuff. So I'll, I'll also dig out that, that template. It might be useful to kind of storyboard it with all the kind of cinegraphic um, direction throughout. That's what we're kind of trying, trying to build really. And as you quite rightly say, we don't want to. We want to be on the same, working to the same document. We don't want to have all of our own, our own, our own kind of um, cynical sort of, uh, you know, the, uh, the the prompt book, whatever you what do you call it, you know, the prompt copy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, we can do that. Um, I'm kind of it's kind of coming up to eleven thirty now. I don't know. We've got another half half an hour, Jamie. How would you how would you would you best want to use that? Do you think based on what we talked about already today? Um, is there things you want to go over again, or you know, do you want to go away and think, think about it, or do you want to look at something? I else think maybe it's this? just going over these, um, going over the making sure that we've got that like we've got a kind of coherent set of notes. Okay. Um, and I wonder if the easiest thing to do there, maybe, do you, similar to the notes I sent you on the script at the end of the last one, is for me to go through that and just update it a bit with what we've discussed. Um, when you sent it, said say you sent me notes on the last one, I'm not sure I got I saw any notes on the last one. Or I think I ended up having we... to send you some Google Drive links. One of which had a whole load of notes in blue. Ooh. I'm going to cut out. I'm going to say thanks to everyone. Uh, see you soon. Jamie, I love you. Hope everything goes great and, you know, speedy, speedy, everything going good. Okay. Really great to work with. Thank you so much. This has been so interesting and I'm really excited to continue.
Cool. Thanks, Steve. See you soon, everyone. Bye bye. Let me just try and find that, Jamie. I'm not quite sure which document it was. <laughs> I'm not sure I got it. Uh, or if I did, I'm not sure whether I might, may not have looked at it. Maybe it didn't send or something. Um, I had um, material you sent me on the last session. You sent me a, you sent me the script. It should have uh, had a whole load of annotated notes on it. I don't know if I got the notes. I got nothing in blue on it. Oh, I tell you what, am I looking at? Should I look at it in Adobe, Adobe Acrobat? I'm looking at it. In, Possibly. I tell you what. I've now tried to open it in a program that will not work. Let me try that. Okay, I'll try. I'll try and open it in Acrobat, and maybe there are comments in Acrobat. Uh, I was looking at it on um, Apple Preview thing. No, I can only see uh, the, the 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 script you sent me. I can only see the um, comments, the script, and then there's comments in red. Um, ah, then that's... I can't see anything else. Would it be easier then for me to share my screen? Or something i don't know um uh i don't know if you can you would need to use um does that work over doesn't work over a network either so so we could call we could capture. we could skip into a zoom or something if if that was easier just for like looking at static bits of screen it, it might be actually yeah yeah or shall i should i send you a link through and should i send it to everyone else as well that'd be good Cool. I'll just put it in the chat. Give me one sec. That's the easiest way of doing it. I don't know why that didn't occur to me. Um, no, I the chat. Um, I can't see why, it's weird because I can't. can't I'm trying to remember where the chat is. It, I think it's amongst the, the the people who are calling who are in the call in. <laughs> and I can never remember where the chat is on these things. Where does the chat appear? Uh, chat window. so long since i used the chat i can no no longer remember do you want to just email it to me jamie would that be possible yeah absolutely thank, thank um you. thank you sorry about that i'll just copy it to you and chris um and if you could circulate it around everyone else because i think i've got everyone's email addresses is that a zoom link is it or, or a yeah. google google meet or something a or zoom link just a zoom, zoom link. perfect zoom with yep. yeah so i've sent a zoom link i've put it in the chat for anyone who can get at the chat and I've emailed it to Paul and Chris. Jane, are you Jane, Tom, are you all right with that? If you can make it. You could. In the chat. In the it's in the it's in the uh, VMix call chat. I think you have a chat a chat window in that VMix call. It should have come up in there. I got to it, but it's saying launch meeting when I go to the Zoom call. Is that Yep. That's odd. That's that's where we oh. That it should have been the invite link. Oh, you may need to click launch meeting to get into. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll try that in just a minute. I've got try that and see. Let's go there now, so we can then leave leave this meeting, and then we'll go there. I will just give me two minutes. I'll be right back. Ah. Hello. Hi, I've made it. <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got echo. Okay, so I need to leave the other one. Not sure what happened with the audio there, one sec. Um,
Hi, I'm in both meetings. I don't know if able to get over to the Zoom meeting. Sorry, Jamie. Jane? Are you managing to get over to the Zoom meeting? Yep. Host has joined. We'll let, uh, we've let them know you're here. So I think Jamie's, Jamie's just letting us in, I think. Oh, okay. Great. I'm kind of in both meetings at the yeah. moment. So. Yeah, yeah, me too. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Great. I think everyone else has left left the B mix. Great. Sorry, you're still there. Oh, I'm less messing me in now. Oh, I'm in there now. I'm in both meetings. Sorry, yeah. sorry that was for some reason uh, that hasn't made a noise. No problem at all. Okay, I can hear you now. Great. Are we all here? Yes, we are. I don't think Tom, Tom might be here. Tom might have to move out. Um, so, the document that I'm working from, mm -hmm. um, I'll just share. 